Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, this is Mark from Solo Games, and um, one of my friends pointed me to this video from uh, MTG Lion. Uh, basically, you know, obviously wanting me to comment on this video, so I figured if I'm gonna kind of tell him about this, why might as well just kind of give my feedback to everyone else. Uh, full disclosure: I have not watched this video, so we're gonna watch it in its full context uh, today on this channel. So let's check it out. Uh, title so far is pretty interesting. IP attorney on why the Magic the Gathering reserve list was never real. So maybe this uh, I will be convinced that reserve list is a bad investment. Let me make sure sound is good. I, this part is always really tough because I have no clue how the output is. Um, I know a lot of uh, live streamers when they do this, um, they have a better idea because uh, they have feedback from the live chat. I don't have anything like that. So you're going to have to bear with me. But please let me know if the audio output is too loud. Um, I'll try to do better next time. It's just really hard to figure figure out what's loud for you guys while I'm recording. But uh, let's get started. I have been an IP attorney for almost a decade. I've actually, yeah, probably a little bit more than a decade. I've been a patent attorney for longer than Pretty that. Pretty impressive, actually. Um, but I've been an IP attorney since 2020, so 2013. I passed my bar exam 2012, but it takes six months and they'd have to do like some interviews and stuff like that and they'll do a travel. But anyway. So I have, uh, I have friends who work in the law industry and uh, yeah, that's getting a law degree is no joke. It's pretty, it's pretty tough. So that's pretty impressive. And apparently he's been doing this for 10 years plus and he was doing patent lawyer stuff and then he passes bar exam. That's, that's pretty impressive. So uh, that's good. He's establishing credibility, which I like in the beginning of the video. So that's going to be a good video. Anyway, my, my point is pretty, pretty simple. Any lawyer, any IP attorney, anyone is going to tell you that the reserve list is not an actual binding contract mm -hmm. because it is not specific enough. Okay. So when you have a contract at the very least, it's got to identify the two parties. One party is wizard of the coast. Okay. That's great. Who is the second party that the contract is meant to benefit? Uh, in this okay. case, people say, oh, people have reserve list it's, cards. It's got to be the players, okay, right? Okay, when the contract was made, some of those people who have reserve list cards, they weren't even born yet. Okay. So can you make a contract to encompass millions of players? Okay, before he says this, um, I think so, because we have laws that protect people, right? And that's all people who are not born yet. I feel like a law is a... A contract between the country and you right um we have i mean you can imagine like if somebody make a, makes a microwave and it's like a antique or something that your grandparents passed down to you and the microwave was um defective um is the microwave company not responsible if it kills a like kid who was born after the contract was drafted i feel like that's not true but maybe i'm not quite understanding his point so I'm, I'm going to assume that you can do this before he says his answer. And potentially hundreds of millions of future players. You could. You could. It could. But it would have to be. That, that already is very, very vague. So the okay. more specific the contracts are, the more likely the contract will hold in court. Yeah. So exactly. That's, so that's the point that he made, right? It's not the fact that you can't. It's not encompassing because you can write a contract any way you want doesn't really have like it's not it's not a way where if you didn't follow the rubric or something that it doesn't hold it's just that if you try to argue that contract in court you're gonna have problems if it's not specific enough right for example i loan you money and you need to pay me back it's not specific enough in court because you don't know how much i loaned you and you don't know when you need to pay me back so that's a problem so whenever i say you know you can go to court with me and say you know what um you know, if I, for example, you don't pay me back and I take you to court, you could say, well, how much was it? Right. And it's kind of a, he said, she said, which is not good enough. It needs to say, I loaned you this much. Okay. And then there's of course the interest rate and all that stuff you have to attach to it. So yes, he's right. As specific as possible is better for sure. So already we have a very vague party standing who can be part, who can sue. Um, if you never played magic back then, could you sue? At the time the contract was the quote con, let's call it contract was made, isn't isn't the contract uh, where for example like class action, where any class that has um, been harmed, I guess you have to prove harm. But if you've been harmed, then you could sue, right? So um, if your if your property has been devalued by somebody, 
with a contract. For example, reserve list is kind of the contract for the, the assets you have in a way. Um, yeah, and here's another thing that just popped up in my head. Um, do you actually have to have a contract? Is maybe Mark Rosewater getting on television or writing an article saying, we will not violate, violate the spirit of the reserve list. Is that sufficient for a binding contract? You didn't play Magic. You only bought Magic recently. And how many players that exist who were playing Magic at the time, like myself, are still around? And is that the only group of people that con So already we have like a very interesting wow. question of what group of people, was it the people who played Magic and had reserve list cards when they, the con when they announced it? All right, sorry, this is sidebar, but Look at the back. This is actually kind of cool. So these boxes are made with uh, bundles or fat packs. I guess we can't say that anymore, but bundles. That's pretty neat, actually. So he's a legit Magic player. Plus, it looks like he collects action figures. So that's kind of cool. He's he's got shelves of these things, man. Are these like an? Are these the anime girl stuff, right? All right, that's cool. That's nice. I like it. Is it everybody? Is it all future generations? <laughs> In like a hundred years from now, does it cover them too? Yes. So we have a very vague definition of who the beneficiary party would be, which is okay. I mean, you could say all the heirs and so on, but this is a little bit more interesting because anyone can say, oh, I own a reserve list card. So is it... Wait, so, so is he saying like, if I buy a computer and then the company goes out of business, refuse to support this computer, that I'm not... I feel like they still have an obligation, even if it wasn't like contractually written in that way, right? Um, so I think you don't have to definitively declare who the owner, uh, who, who, who bought the computer, right? I mean, as long as you are the owner of the computer now, um, the company still has some responsibility to you to ensure that this thing is working or, and, or at least not causing you harm. Everyone who's ever purchased a reserve list card, is it everyone who purchased a re reserve list? Is everyone who survived Chronicles? Is it a person who quit magic because of Chronicles? They promised a reserve list. And then they said, oh, I'm back again. Is it that person? Because that sounds like the type of person that it would be and it wouldn't be for everybody. But okay. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about something that... I, I think the key of that point is you have to prove damages. So that's interesting that he's brought that up. But meaning, for example, if, if you have a card you, that you paid, let's say, $600 for under the assumption that they're not going to reprint this card, but they reprint this card. Now the card is worth 300. You have damages, right? Whereas if like you bought a standard set, you're not part of this. You're not a party to this problem at all. They print the same reserveless card. Sure, that card went down $300, but it, I mean, to prove that that card going down $300 has affected, for example, cards in your booster box because people are less likely to play Magic. They have lost faith in it. I think that's a little stretch. But yeah, I think the person who purchased this card definitely can prove damages. That seems easy all lawyers know if you sign a contract and the contract is between party a and party b let's say the contract is um your your dog does not poop on my lawn okay okay uh, Good example. and you've been neighbors for tw 30 years 30 okay. years so you sign a contract 10 years in your neighbor's dog is still pooping or if your dog poops on my lawn you give me a hundred dollars okay okay let's say that's the contract well, okay, the dog, you know, the dog is continuing to poop on your lawn. You're yeah. not suing. You're not enforcing a contract. And you're not getting you $100. Okay. This happens for 20 years. Okay. So even if you had a contract, even if you had a binding contract of some party on, you know, some part beneficiary party, you did not enforce the contract. Okay. Nobody, when they reprinted Wheel of Fortune, no one sued. You know, they reprinted that as a judge promo. They reprinted Survival of the Fittest. Nobody. So, like, you cannot say that this party of... Wait, when did they reprint these cards? Did they actually reprint these cards? Hold on. Okay. All right. He's right. Yeah, they printed this card in... Let's get a bigger image of this. 1993? 2009. Okay, so they reprinted this card in 2009. Yeah, they did. Okay. All right, he's not wrong. Millions of people 
did not know they were actually reprinting with the correct backs, by the way, yeah. ju as Judge Promo's reserve list cards. Cradle. That's yeah. another one I forgot in the That's last right. video. I know about that one, yeah. There are multiple, multiple reserve list cards that were reprinted in Judge Promos. There were uh, the From the Vault set, which had mocks and memory jar. Might have had but some to be stuff, fair, the mock the from the Vault set was what caused the revise revision to the reserve list right so the whole idea is with, was i think the original reserve list is we would not reprint these cards um which later then turned into like a definition of a reprint which means no part of the mana cost title uh creature text line type text line um effect uh, in the text box uh so all the different pieces were then kind of reserved whereas before they were just saying oh we're not going to print let for example an alpha version of you know um a bad lens but that doesn't make i mean that doesn't block them from printing let's say a, from the vault lands with different artwork different text different frame um as long as it's different enough so they had a they had a loophole which they plugged because they had they ran into problems so the reserve list had well the reserve list was first formed because of chronicles but then there was a revision a major revision done when from the vault happened and i think I think that actually stopped it. So I don't know when From the Vault Relics happened, but I think that set, because it angers so many people, that stopped all those Judge promo versions of these cards from being reprinted as well. Now, he he's probably right, because I'm not a, a lawyer here. He's probably right that nobody sued. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's... Maybe it does. Okay, that's fair. Big ones, right? So how can you then go about and say, okay, well, it's 20 years now, your dog poop, so okay, imagine, we 10 years of dogs pooping, and then we agreed, okay, we signed a contract, you know, dog, your dog does not poop on my lawn, if I catch it pooping, you will give me $100. Okay, fine. Okay, for the next 20 years, you're assuming your dog, maybe it's not even a dog, something has got to survive 20, 30 years. I don't know when it would be. He Maybe it's a very a super here. old dog, the longest living dog in history. Um, but if you're, if the neighbor's dog keeps doing that, and okay. you don't ever make it, you know, a, a deal about collecting or enforcing the contract, the contract, if there should be one, which I don't even believe there is one, has not been enforced. There's been no lawsuits. There has been, you know, no discussions from the neighbor. Clearly. Nobody has said anything. I mean, outside of maybe Reddit posts, right? Right. Well, why would the court enforce that today? Yeah. Clearly, <laughs> there. Yeah. He's talking about precedents, and this is very, very important in law, right? So this is kind of fact with law is that a lot of times you want to use something called precedents um, to argue a piece of law, especially if it's new, is really, really tough. So what lawyers would usually do is they try to bring on a similar case. So, for example, if, uh, you know, somebody, for example, while they were killing somebody, they took their necklace and also whatever. The, the problem is now you can't really maybe killing somebody is easy. But if either during the murder, they were they also took their ne necklace. You know, what does that mean? Is that something special? Should you punish that more? Should you punish that less? Now, if there's precedence, for example, in the past, somebody do had done this, then, you know, whatever. Um, okay, super bad example. This is as bad as the dog example. So let me give a better example. Um, McDonald's coffee. You remember this case, right? So before this, you know, if you buy a coffee from McDonald's or anywhere, really, Starbucks, you know, choose your coffee place, you know, Joe's Coffee Shop. Um, and you, you drive with a coffee cup and you spill that coffee in your lap and you burn your lap. Well, it's kind of your fault, right? I mean, you drove with it. You didn't pilot correctly, and then the coffee spilled. Um, the, the problem, though, is that some lawyer went through this lawsuit and sued McDonald's, and they won. So they basically proved that, you know what, it wasn't sufficient of McDonald's to warn people that um, the coffee is hot and that it can spill. And if you drive unsafely, it will spill and burn your lap, right? There's a lot more details of how they argued this case, but they won. And now, most coffees, mugs, if you look at all of them, they'll say caution contents hot, right? Or contents may be hot, something like that. And the reason they say this is because they need to tell people that the stuff inside this cup is hot. Because if they don't do that, they can then bring up the precedence of the, of the McDonald's case and say, 
this is another one of those where you didn't warn people that the coffee is hot and now that you burned my clients, blah, you know, and they're going to have a much easier time arguing that case because what judge is going to overturn a, a previous case, you know, unless it's a very specific and special circumstances. So it's really tough. So what he's, he's talking about is precedence, meaning somebody has to take this whole thing to court and have won it once or honestly lost it once too because once you lose something like this, then you now, have a, you now have a very clear interpretation of that contract, right? Maybe your understanding was wrong. And so, it, it, but it defines for the future, if another case like this happens, what the likely outcome is. Not guaranteed, but it makes it a lot easier. So he's talking about precedence here, and it is, it is very important. Neither party thought this contract was real. And that's my point. Yeah. Maybe it was a f fake, it, maybe it was a joke, maybe it was an offhanded comment, and then, you know, to your neighbor, oh, it was very funny, right? Maybe it was told in such a way that the neighbor didn't actually think he was getting into a yep. contract. Yep. But you thought you got in your contract, but you yep. didn't enforce it for 20 years. Right. You can't then enforce it today because there is a pattern of history of you not enforcing it, of the contract okay. not being real. Wow. So this is even more. Right? So if the contract was real, why would you not enforce it at wheel? Why would you not enforce? You wouldn't wait 20 years for the 30 year anniversary to then be like, oh, this product offends me. I'm yeah, he's right. Okay, so this is even worse because it's not just that you've set a precedence. It's the fact that you've set a precedence of not enforcing a contract. So either you don't believe the reserve list or or, or you think it's, um... okay, that's fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I, I have something to say about this whole reserve list thing you know, as a, as an enforceable contract. But, but anyways, I'll wait until the end of the video for that. I'm going to, <coughs> there's going to be nobody who will sue. Nobody. I mean, there's a lot of magic players who are lawyers, right? Okay. They're not going to take this case. Yeah. There are a lot of people like Rudy Chan who have a lot of reserve list cards. <laughs> Rudy Chan. And then this product is not a direct challenge so to his holdings. The next product will be. The next product the will next be product. correct back will absolutely be a challenge to Wait. all the reserve list holders and it's coming product will be the next product will be correct back will absolutely be a Wait. challenge to all the reserve list holders and it's coming Wait, wait. he's saying they're going to reprint the reserve list with the correct back and the correct front so no gold waters nothing special no stamps no whatever to say there's difference i have no doubt that actually would that even matter if let's say stamp is different? So they give you a stupid acorn stamp or something with the right back, with the right front. No, I think that's effectively reprinted the reserve list. It doesn't matter if you introduce a new stamp, right? Or new set symbol or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. So he's saying they're going to reprint. So is, does he have evidence for this or is he just kind of talking? Uh, a product that is a reprint. Maybe they use new artwork. Maybe, maybe they sense. don't is coming for both Power 9, the dual lands and everything. Wow. And it will be legal playable. There won't be any commander, you know, issues, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it'll be, uh, it'll be a legal product. It won't have the proxy back, which is the mistake I think they made. What they should have done. The proxy back was a mistake. Done is they should have just straight up printed it. So the number one complaint it seems okay. people have. All right. So I don't actually know MTG line that well. Can you guys tell me in the comments if he's one of those people who support just reprinting the reserve? Like I'm from the way he's saying things now, it sounds like he is in support of abolishing the reserve list as a whole. Is that about right? I mean, again, it's not going to color my um my uh, my my feedback at the end, but I'm actually kind of curious about that too. So let me know in the comments if that's what he uh, if that he's known for that kind of commentary. Have is that it's a proxy. If you change the back out, mm -hmm. are people complaining as much? And yeah, I think so. I don't think anyone wanted this. Well, that's not true. He wants this. So that's, he, he, is, he is anyone, correct? So there are people who want this. Um, I'm obviously with Rudy Chan here um, because I have money in the reserve list. So obviously I don't want this. I think a lot of, I have store owners who don't want this. I mean, they have, okay, so this is actually kind of interesting, right? You got, you got rich people, obviously, your investors and your collectors who don't want this. You have store owners who definitely don't want this. So I'm actually kind of curious. If you're a player, right? And if you own less than, less than five reserve list cards, 
that are more than $200. Okay. So that pretty much sets aside all the like visions, reserve list cards, like weather light, those like minimal stuff. I'm talking like dual lands and higher wheels of fortune, Arabian nights type of stuff, right? If you own more, less than five of those and you are a player, so it could be zero, right? Let me know in the comments. Do you care? Because I'm actually really curious about this point. Is this a thing that only I care about and because I have money in it? Or is it the other people who don't even have money in it care? I'm actually kind of curious. And if you do care, uh, actually, I guess if you do care or don't care, leave me a comment also on why. I'm, I would be very interested in reading all of your comments on this. And you made it cheaper, obviously. <clears throat> no. The reserve list was never, in my opinion, it was never even real. Like okay. the, the reason it wasn't real from a legal perspective, how can you say all magic players under the future? Like, it's just so like, you could say all people born into the family and so on, because you know, in trust in the States, that's done very often. Like you can say, Hey, this trust is for not just your son, not just you, but if you have a son, then I, you know, they can get into the trust. I mean, they, they do this all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's a very limited line lineage, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that's still a very narrow class of people. You can't just say, oh, all magic players forever. And all, <laughs> I mean, it's just such a huge class of potential people. And that huge class, none of them spoke up. None of them sued when they did reprint. They actually reprinted the reserve list. Nobody did nothing. So why would you do something? Why would you doing something 20 years later actually help when they're, they have precedents. Okay. And he means 20 years because when they printed all these uh, relics from the revolt stuff, they was all in the 20, I think 2010, 2011 era. I think he's right about that. Yeah. That, hey, we did do this already. And we actually did it with the correct. So what is mm. coming next down the line is what people are going to fight more over. The Rudy Chans, the, you know, the vintage magic. They're going to get pissed when this happens. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a Black Lotus with the correct back. Oh, damn. So we're going directly to a Black Lotus? I, dude, I swear, I thought this is going to be like some like tier three reserve list stuff, right? Okay, so we're going directly to the, the, the A plus, the S tier, that double, the triple SSR tier. Interesting, okay. That is legally playable in all formats. That is what's coming down the line. Now, when will that come? Will that come tomorrow? Probably not. Will it come a month from now? I don't know. It will come a year from now. Will it come 10 years from now? Who knows? But... 10, 10 years is a long time, dude. Um, no one knows what's going to happen in 10 years. Hasbro may not even be a company the way they're going right now in 10 years. Uh, WotC may not exist. So, so, So here's the thing, right? Whenever people give you predictions like this, it's it's kind of it's kind of BS. Here's why. Um, this is like me saying there will be a war. There will be a great war in the future, right? This is why you have to be very careful when people give you stupid things like prophecies and whatever, without a time frame bound to this thing, right? There will be a great war in five years. That's an impressive prediction, right? Maybe there will be a great war in a hundred years. Not so impressive of a prediction, right? Because we literally have those every hundred years. It's kind of consistent there will be a great war in the future that's pretty much a guarantee i mean i'll i'll, I'll side with that right the, the earth will end of course eventually right billions of years in the future i mean we're, we're gonna get roasted by the sun so when when the sun goes like you know uh, red giant so 10 years i guess he did time bound by 10 years so he's i don't okay to be fair i don't think he's saying within 10 years he's saying sometime in the future which then i don't really care about his sentence because i can also say the same thing right there will be reprints of magic cards with the right backs in the future i mean that's that's not too hard to kind of fulfill because you could also just fake print them too do they count what if the printers in china get really really good and we really can't tell the difference wouldn't that just be the real card? I mean, what is the difference between a fake Black Lotus and a real Black Lotus if the fake one is as good as the real one? When Wizard of the... You know, I, I actually know when it's coming. Whenever Hasbro loses too much money, the stock price goes down a lot. So, so to be fair, that's already happened. They went from like $100, right? 
down to like what was today like 60 maybe a little higher today uh, i'm recording on the 7th of november so that's already happened i mean losing 40 percent is a lot i mean again same problem here give me a number goes down a lot go to zero go to twenty dollars go to ten dollars lose 90 percent. what is the number you can't you know i mean he's an attorney he should know this right be specific just like he's saying they will come up with that product. They already have the product made. It's it's very simple. They just change out the backs. You realize that product has already been made. The product that is a nightmare for people who have reserve list cards is already made. And look at the backlash that they've already caused. So I'm not sure what you're saying here because if you're saying they already have the product made and they were testing the water, well, guess what? Their test kind of is a good sign that they shouldn't be doing this as far as I can tell, with the community. They have the front, which they've redesigned and made new, and they already have the back. The back is the card of every Magic set. They just got to print it. And trust me, when the stock goes down, things are not, you know, stockholders are getting a little mad. Yeah, it's going to be... But once they play that game, it's over. Because what else could they do? What else could they do better? Okay, so... That's okay. So to be fair, that's really dumb. Here's why. Right now, Hasbro has a game. The game has value because they've created artificial value. And they're continuing to create artificial value with things like serialized cards, with hyper chase cards like Shattered Glass and whatever, Neon Ink, Hitesugus, right? So he's saying if they print Black Lotus, then there's nothing. There's, I mean, at that point, you can't print something better. I kind of disagree because you could just print, print literally like a blacker, blacker Lotus, if that makes sense. Zero mana, mono artifact, you know, sacrifice blacker, blacker Lotus, uh, gain seven mana. It's a better card. I just printed black Lotus, but better, right? So they can definitely print better. Power creep, it will get there. But the really interesting thing about power, interesting thing about power creep is you notice how there are alpha cards that are just not even playable, but they're worth a lot of money. Why? because they're rare, not because they're useless. Now, to be fair, it is better if you have a card that's both useful and it's rare, but there are cases I can make for the collectability of this thing. So, so I think he's right that if they do this, it is, it is over for wizards. But at the same time, I mean, isn't that the whole point? Meaning, why would you, you okay, if you're a fisherman, What's the, what's the strategy here? You sell the fish. You'd never sell the rod. You understand? You never sell the way to make this thing. And like, so, so you don't sell the black lotus because once you give that up, like you're saying, you've give up, given up everything. Then nothing you print in the future will be impressive anymore. So why would people chase anything? But then again, there are games like Pokemon and... Um, Flesh and Blood and uh, I guess like Yu-Gi-Oh, they don't have reserve lists and they're fine. There are cards in the past that are worth money just simply because they're rare, even if they're not good anymore, right? So I guess there is an argument to be made that maybe we don't need the reserve list for the cards in the past to make, to be worth something. So I'm not sure about that either. So that's my point. There's nothing that they can do better in my opinion because at the end of the day, what's better than a real Black Lotus in this game? Nothing, right? Bye, guys. So, so okay. Um, so he's saying there's nothing better than Black Lotus. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I already answered that. I, I think there's definitely something that could be better than Black Lotus. They've already gone basically to that point. There's power creep everywhere. So we already have cards better than a lot of reserve list cards. And I could definitely see. So what I can see in the future of Hasbro is we can definitely print cards that are better than what's on the reserve list, which probably will decrease the value of dual lands. And here's the reality. We already have dual lands. I mean, at this point, I'm not even sure why we need to print dual lands again. I mean, triomes are amazing. I would argue triomes are somewhat better than dual lands because they offer something that dual lands cannot offer. Um... I would argue that there are ways to get basically a dual land without having a dual land. Yes, they're not fetchable, but all of your like buddy lands, battle bond, uh, what was the newest set? Uh, I guess they reprinted them again in like um, Boulder Skate, right? So we already have those. 
there's a lot of ways to basically get effectively dual lands, but they're not dual lands. And realistically, do players really care? I mean, I I think there is a group out there. Uh, I know I know you guys are in the comments because I've seen it that say things like I would never play with a fake card, right? If I don't have that card, I just don't play it. But I also know groups of players that would just, I mean, I don't know, buy a proxy. Um, I've told people like the Cryptic Spires from <sighs> Double Masters 2022, just circle two lands. That's your duel. I don't care. I mean, honestly, I, I'm not going to like, <laughs> you know, we're here, we're here to play a commander game. I'm not going to fault you for a land, right? Now, the problem is not that you're playing a dual land. The problem becomes... If you're playing a deck that's just not fun for the table, that's how I get mad at you, right? If, if we're all just kind of chilling with like pre-cons and you're bringing like, I don't know, a 10, <laughs> um, you know, we may have one game and we're kicking you out afterwards. We're going to tell you to swap a deck out. So it really doesn't help that you're playing dual lands. Um, I am really curious about one thing though. So one thing he stated in the, in the, um, the video was about the $1,000 30th anniversary packs i found it interesting that he's mentioning that everyone is mad because they are proxies effectively right with the fake backs so here's a question for all of you guys i'm actually really curious um if they printed those cards but in proper black proper backs everything just looks like a normal card there is no difference and of course they would say these are tournament legal so effectively reprinting the reserve list same price though Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to add two more stipulations to this because I think the same price is a little bit weird. So let's do this. Same price still, but the front is white border. So they look like revised. Okay, white border front, magic back. This is basically what Flesh and Blood is doing, right? And I'm actually kind of curious how this will play in Magic World. Uh, white border front, you know, the normal back and the back. The rarity level is very similar to what's happening in uh, whatever is happening in the same 30th anniversary packs, right? Same rarity level, so we don't change that. Uh, same contents, effectively. Um, you can get new frames or the old frame, same of that content as well. But again, all of the cards are white border, right? So they're effectively equivalent to revised cards. Um, would you buy them? Would you pay $1,000 for it? And actually, more important than would you pay 1000 is would you like it would you not complain about the product if it was a thousand dollars but it had playable cards i'm actually really curious um if you answer this question please also just let me know if you do or do not own uh greater than five reserve list cards that are more than 100 bucks okay so if you have reserve list cards that are worth i don't know let's say a thousand dollars total right or more then tell me that and or less tell me that as well Okay, uh, that's going to do it for me today. Very interesting video, different perspective. So I'm always, you know, I like listening to different perspectives. I don't agree, um, obviously, with this perspective of like, hey, we should reprint the reserve list because exactly what, he, I mean, he made the point at the end of the video, which is once they do this, they give up the whole rod. And now, because the problem is this, right? In Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Flesh and Blood, you didn't have this concept of, of a reserve list. I mean, Flesh and Blood, I would say, has a soft reserve list. But, you know, the other games definitely don't have this concept. So it doesn't break anything for the players when you don't change anything, right? The problem is Magic has set this precedence for basically 30 years at this point. Um, you've given people the allure of Magic. I mean, like... Wizards will think that there is no secondary market, right? Pretend nobody on it, there's no secondary market at all. But the reality, we all know, they it, it does exist. There is a secondary market. So, given that's a reality, um, do we really think that they don't care to appease all of the players, including the ones that are spending a lot of money with them? It seems like a stupid idea, especially when they can just print artificial rarity and it seems to work. My friend today um, showed me the prices of Hidesugus. I actually have not looked for, I don't know, a couple months. It seems like every version except the most rare, the red version, has dropped down to like pretty low values. Um, part of the reason is because I think the card is just not so playable. And I, I bet you that's a test because just like the Vasira Seer serialized in the Hidesugu Super Chase, um, they are using cards like this 
because they want to know if making something rare but not of a very, very good card, would that matter? And I think that's a really interesting test that they're trying because if you, <clears throat> yeah, if, if they can make those work, of course, now they just have a cash cow because they can reprint all sorts of non-rare, like not so great cards, but you know, earn tons of money from it because people are going to have to crack packs to get those cards or pay a lot, a lot of money on the secondary market, which means somebody's going to open boxes. But if it doesn't work and it falls flat on their face, they're going to have to think of a new strategy, which is, I think, what they're doing. Because if you think about it, Worm Coil Engine, unlike those previous cards, is a very good card. That one is serialized. So we shall see, I guess, right? So I guess uh, today is November 7th. We're probably going to have to do a video checking back on in on something like this in about probably six months to a year. And then we'll definitely talk about it. Uh, but until then, this is Mark from Solar Games. Hey, I hope you have a great time. Um, Brothers Wars coming out this week. Go to your pre-release. Have fun. Um, again, hold the line. Don't buy a ton of product for Brothers War. And definitely, definitely, definitely wait for Amazon uh, item drops on Black Friday. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't enjoy the set. Go play pre-release. Um, play a game or two. Do, do a draft with your friends. I think those are uh, something I would highly support. So, and if there are singles you, you want or you need, um, I would buy them. And if you want to buy them for me. <laughs> All right. This is Mark Solo Games. I'll see you next time. Bye.